I got good news. Something good is happening here. Something good. Here. Something good. Something good. Here. Something good. in here. It's a great day to give the Lord some praise. I asked someone today how they were doing, and they said they are still moving. That is a blessing to be able to move. So we thank you, Lord, today that we can move and that we have our right mind. I say welcome to the house of the Lord. Hopefully you met him this morning before you came and that we just carried his presence in with us because there is truly nothing like the presence of the Lord. To Facebook, I say welcome. I say enjoy our service. I say expect something today. Share the page because truly when we share the page, we are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And maybe by you sharing the page, it will just plant something and then the Lord will give the increase. So today I just ask you to worship with us, to praise with us, to put your petitions before the Lord today because he can do all things but fail. Let's just worship today. Hallelujah. It's only about him. to you let the rivers of my worship flow to you Lord I pray in all I do let the rivers of my worship flow to you Lord 
Hallelujah. Come on, let your worship flow. Let your worship flow this morning. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, go ahead and give him your best worship today. Give him your best. Give him your best thank you for bringing you here this morning. Come on. You, he didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to wake us up this morning, but he did. So we ought to say thank you. Our praise this morning ought to say thank you. I worship this morning. I ought to say thank you. It's not about us. It's all about him. Come on, somebody put a whole lot of praise on it today. Somebody give him your best worship. Tell him thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a brand new day. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us. Thank you, Lord, for watching over. Let's praise him this morning. All our praise goes to him. All our worship belongs to him. All of it, all of it. Just think about something God has done for you. Just on this morning, think about it and begin to praise him. I don't know about you, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done, all he's done, my soul cries out hallelujah anybody got a hallelujah in their spirit this morning anybody got a hallelujah hallelujah is the highest praise today oh come on somebody tell him hallelujah somebody tell him thank you God somebody tell him I love you Lord I bless you Lord I honor you Lord I worship you God you've been to me. Anybody know he's been good? Anybody glad he's been good? Oh yeah, come on. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yes, he's worthy today. We serve a, we serve a mighty God this morning. And he deserves all of our praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. His name is worthy to be praised. Anybody agree with me that his name is worthy? There's no other name under the sun. Oh, yeah, let's praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. Our God is mighty. Our God is great. Our God is ever, an everlasting God, a keeper. Oh, yes, I'm so grateful this morning for the God that I serve. Yes, hallelujah. I'll be reading for you this morning from the book of Psalms, Psalms 103, 1 to 5. A familiar passage of scripture, but nonetheless one that excites our spirit. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Anybody glad about that this morning? Anybody glad that we got a God that has redeemed us, a God that has kept us from destruction, a God that healeth and forgives us? Anybody glad you've been forgiven today? Anybody glad you've been redeemed today? Anybody know you've been healed, saved, set free, and delivered 
today. Yeah. Let's praise him for it today. Let's praise him as pastor comes. Keep the praise going. Don't stop praising him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Stay right there, fellas. Stay right there. Stay right there. Kendall, keep, Kendall, keep that scripture up there. I saw something in that scripture today. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, let's sing this scripture. Everybody, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. And all that is within me. To bless the Lord, oh my soul. who know I'm right about it. He has done great things. Bless his whole, bless his whole. Lee, I will, I will. Bless the Lord. Oh, 
one is worthy to be praised. Come on, well, if he's a great God, give him a great, great praise. Hallelujah, give him a great praise if he's a great God. Give him a marvelous praise if he's a marvelous God. If he's a mighty God, give a mighty, mighty, mighty. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, in case you haven't figured it out, the Lord is in this room. Thank you, Jesus. His power is in the place. I heard somebody say, heard somebody say, put a lot on it. Is that what you said? Put a lot on it. You ever went out to dinner and, and, and the waiter was coming around with the pepper and he said, tell me when to, tell me when to stop. You know, when they're coming around with the cheese tree, come on. And, and, and you say, tell me when to stop. Will you tell your neighbor, say, you don't have to tell me, come on, to stop it. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus, come on. My mind gets happy. My soul gets happy. My feet get happy. Don't you tell me to I'm going to put a lot on it. I'm going to put my praise on it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Uh, we're not going to be here all day. I know you're waiting for 1130 to chat. We're not going to be here all day. You don't need another reason. All you need is another opportunity to give God praise. Have a seat, praise team. Thank you. Bless the name of the Lord. Did you share the Facebook page already? Amen. All right. Share the page. Every time you share the page, you are sharing the wonderful, glorious, magnificent, infallible, incorruptible gospel of Jesus the Christ. He was born, he lived, he died. He got up on the third day, and he's coming back. You don't want to miss the airplane from the airport. Amen. Don't go to hell with a church fan in your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's a t-shirt. Amen. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said then? Don't go to hell with a church fan. In your hand. Yes, sir. Come on now. You going to need it. Where you going? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Amen. 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 Uh, <laughs> Amen. Don't put your fan down now. Amen. Amen. I see your face in the place, your feet under the seat, and your hands in the air. Amen. 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 Just tell your neighbor, just tell your neighbor, I was looking for you today, and I'm glad to see you. Amen. Come on, tell somebody else, I'm so glad to see you. Amen. 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 I need everybody to get a captain for their row. Amen. Get a captain for their row, their section and say, amen, we're going to worship on our road. If nobody else gets a blessing, I'm going to get mine. Amen. Amen. Any first-timers in the room today? Any first-time visitors in the house today? First time joining us at the Word and Worship Church? God bless you. Thank you so much for coming out. Amen. Amen. We're going to be nice to her this morning. Amen. God bless you. 856-462-0075. You look like you're young enough to have a social media device. Just connect with us, and we will connect with you. Amen. Brother Cecil, good to see you today. God bless you, Brother Cecil. Amen. Um, one of the blessings um, now that I'm in training, amen, I'm a bodybuilder now that y'all know, amen, hallelujah, amen. Uh, you get to see people and meet people and connect with people and talk about the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ. My brother said, I'm going to come to church on Sunday. I said, you are, amen. I said, I know you are. He's here. Thank you for being a man of integrity and character just to keep your, isn't it good to have somebody just keep their word? Amen, amen. Um, well, good to see you, Maurice. Amen. God bless.
bless you. Vernon's out of town. Vernon, you should be watching. Amen. Your show don't start till later. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep Vernon. Where's Vernon? Boston. I think he's in Boston. Okay. Uh, we have um, a plethora of musicians and so skillful and so talented. And um, everybody's pulling on them. Sometimes we got to let them go. Amen. Amen. He'll be back Tuesday. Amen. For TNT. God bless you. Um, tell your neighbor, I got a feeling that Jesus will work it out. Come on, let's have some church. Jesus will.
I know that he will. Everybody say, I know that he will. I know that, I know that, I know. I know that he will. I know. you're going through this morning, you say, I know God's going to bring me out of this. If you need God to do a miracle, I want you to meet me at the altar this morning. Come on. Come on. Come on. See, I'm, I'm expecting God to do something. I know that he will. I know that he will. Come on. I know that Come on, Shannon. I know that he will. Let me give you your assignment, Shannon. Come on. Amen. I want you to pray for these people specifically at the altar. You don't know their business. Holy Spirit knows all about it. All right. Um, if my people who are what? Called by my what? My name would do what? Would humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Uh, God says that he would do what? Forgive their sin and heal their land. All right, so the first thing we need, we need forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Not to get saved again, but to stay in fellowship. Amen. Um, you did something. Come on. You, there, there's something clogging up your shower from getting the water, letting water get out. All right. All right. So you need some spiritual Drano. All right. Amen. And I know you don't want to touch it or talk about it. It's nasty. Guess what? It's yours. Go ahead and look at it. Come on, touch it. All right. And then cast it all on him. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord, and humble as we know how. Coming to you, oh God, first acknowledging who you are and what you are to us and what you will do for us. But right now, Lord, we're asking you to forgive us, oh, Father. Forgive them for any trespasses that we have done to anybody. Forgive us for the trespasses we may have done years ago. Forgive them for trespasses that we have probably done before we even came to church. So, God, we just want you to reach down, touch us in our heart, touch us in our soul, be in our mind, oh, Father, Changing of our mind, Lord, Lord, is what we need. Changing knowing that you are going to forgive us and bring us right back to the righteous state that we need to be. Glory, if it had not been for you, your son Jesus Christ, and all the things that he had done for our life, oh, Father, but with it for him, for died on our cross and bringing us back from the remission of sins, oh, God, where would we be in our life right now? So right now, oh God, if there's anything that I have done personally, which I know I have done, oh God, I'm asking you to forgive me. Lord, there's people that we may have hurt. There's people that we may have uh, made feel uh, discomforted. But Lord, we know that you are a redeemer. We know that you are a way maker. We know that you are the truth and the life. So God, we just thank you. Thank you for what you do for us, and thank you for the way that you have keep us in, in your sight, oh God. So keep us, oh Father. Heal us if we have any ailments in our bodies. Protect those who are close to us, oh God. And Lord, we just thank you, because you are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to stay at the altar quickly. Um, listen. 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 Um, Kendall, if you could put up our Pentecost announcement. Um, listen, next Sunday, it's, it's very critical that you're here. Um, we're going to be honoring, celebrating uh, 
the third part of the Trinity. Not the one who saved you, but the one who stuck with you. Did you hear what I said? The one who stuck with you. Once he saves you, he stuck with you. Uh, that's next Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. Kendall, next slide. Uh, having an anointing oil service. The anointing oil is already in the house. Every family will receive a vial, a bottle of anointing oil. We're praying for healing. And the Holy Spirit will be released, that people will be filled. Next slide, Kendall. Uh, Acts chapter 2 says, and when the day of Pentecost came, they were what? They were all on one accord. Everybody say one accord. One accord. I'm going to ask the body of Christ to stand at this time, if we could stand at this time. It's Acts chapter 2, verse 1. This is what I'm asking starting on tomorrow at 2 p.m. I want the body of Christ, particularly the Word and Worship Church, at 2 p.m. You can stop what you're doing. You can con continue what you're doing. But I want the whole church to begin to pray at 2 p.m. Okay. All right. All right. You can pray from 2 p.m. to 2.01 because it's not the length, it's the strength. If you think it's about how long and deep you pray, you better ask Peter. Peter said, Lord, save me. If you work uh, different types of shift, you pray at what time? 2 a.m. Where are my 2 a.m.ers at? You say, I'm sleep at 2 p.m., but 2 a.m. How many people say, Pastor, I think I can pray Monday through Saturday at 2 p.m.? All of us praying together. Doesn't have to be a long prayer. Come on. Just stop what you're doing. If you're, if, if you're teaching, come on. The student's getting on your nerves. Say, just say, thank you, Jesus. If you're a truck driver, Ty, at 2 at two o'clock, don't you close your eyes. Amen. Tree, if you're doing hair, ask you a question, say, give me a minute. I'm excited about what's going to happen. Y'all want to get in on this, musicians? Come on. You said, Pastor, I ain't a member of the church. Well, you better join today. Amen. <laughs> Facebook, from, why are we doing two? Because it's Acts chapter two. All right. Verse number one. Just something so you will remember. 2 p.m., we're going to start praying for our service on Sunday, praying for souls, praying for healing, praying for miracles, praying for expectation. Amen. And I don't need you to do a lot, but I do need you to do a little bit. Amen. When does it start? Tomorrow. Don't be praying for the Lakers. Amen. You, you praying for the service. You praying for the outpouring. I can cast my cares. Everybody, nothing like the presence. Nothing like, like the, the presence, presence of the Lord. Come on, we setting up for next Sunday already. I can run to him and find safety. Come on, altar still open. Come on. Nothing like, nothing like the peace he gives to me. I can cast my cares. I can cast my cares in trouble. Come on, he'll make everything. He'll make everything all right. Keep holding on. Can I get a witness? He'll make everything. Keep holding. 
say Nothing like the presence of the Lord I can run I can run to Him and find safety Nothing like the peace He gives to me Nothing like the peace He gives to me I feel glory in the room Something's getting ready to pop in this place I can cast my victory we thank you in advance for victory we don't have it when we see it we have it when we hear it I hear the sound of victory I don't need to look at the scoreboard come on I hear the sound of victory we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus Encourage somebody close to you. Encourage somebody close to you. Encourage somebody close to you. He'll make everything all right. Come on. He'll make everything all right. Hey, two. Come on, hug that person. Come on. He'll make it all right. Yes, he will. Encourage somebody in the house. I feel a hug. I feel a hug. He'll make everything all right. It'll make everything all right. Nothing like the presence. Nothing like his presence. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, musicians.
this Tuesday, 7 p.m., TNT. I'm going to ask that the congregation will come out on this Tuesday uh, for a special TNT as we prepare for Pentecost Sunday. God just told me to put a demand on it. This Tuesday at 7 p.m. Kids Club today, uh, immediately following the offering. Save the date for the women. Um, I think I have a, a save the date. Rest in his, rest in him. Save the date, sisters. That's Friday, June 23rd. First Lady will give you further details on that. Let's give our First Lady a hand. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. She's got some major decisions to make um, in the near future. Keep First Lady in prayer. I got a text from Brother Fred this week. He told me that he was praying for me. Okay. Um, and I believed it. Amen. It's good to get um, some sheep who will pray for the shepherd. Because the shepherd is always encouraging the sheep. Sometimes you need some sheep who will remind you uh, that God is able. Amen. Um, all May birthdays, May birthdays. Sister Wilda, see ya. Sister Carolyn, God bless you. True. Amen. We could. 30th, 31st, 31st, tomorrow, Jesus said, <laughs> amen, all right, lift that hand in the air, amen, if you don't want it, give it to pastor, amen, good to see you back, Sister Lisa, God bless you, God bless you, good to see you back. Gabby, stand up real quick. Gabby, stand up real quick. Amen. Amen. We'll be dedicating uh, baby. La Gia Bella will be dedicating her on the first Sunday in June. First Sunday in June, we'll be honoring her to the Lord. Amen. Come on out on the first Sunday. Thank you, Gabby. All right. Any other, any other May birthdays? May birthdays. Aunt Kitty, did you get did you get a card? Okay, Amen. God bless you, Aunt Kitty. Amen. Amen. So we salute you. We say happy birthday, and we thank God uh, for just another day, Amen, that He has kept us alive. And somebody said, Kendall. Yeah. All right. Kendall, Kendall, you had a birthday. Amen. Why ain't nobody tell me? Amen. All right. Kendall's 15. Can you believe it? Everybody keeps saying, Pastor, you're going to have to get your shotgun. No, I'm not. Amen. Amen. You get your shotgun for those who are not trained. Amen. We've been training her. Amen. Amen. No, ain't no shotgun. No, no, no shotgun. Amen. 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 He, he, he can't just be saved either. You have to understand what unequally yoked means. Amen. Amen. I've been saved for 20 years. You got saved last night. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I need somebody, somebody who know the Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. But thank, thank God for our media team, Rob, Mike, Al, Junie. Where's Junie at? Junie in the back. Uh oh, Judy, boy, Al told me off this morning, Judy. But well, he got with me this morning. I said, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give Judy and Al a hand. They work so hard here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for that. 
Amen. Let's go into our offering, our morning offering at this time. We give for three reasons. We give because he's our savior. We give because he's our source. And we give God because the scriptures tells us to give. Amen. Nick and Tyree, we're praying for you right now in the name of Jesus. Praying for you. Praying for the Polnitz family, Brother Fred. Brother Fred's coming along. Amen. Brother Fred had a stroke uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, but uh, he's slowly maturing and getting back. Amen. So we're praying for the Polnitz family. Amen. He's 78 years old. Amen. But God is able. Sister Crystal, we're praying for your mother as well. We're praying that God is able to keep. Amen. Brian is with his mother. Amen. Keep praying for Brian's mother. All right. All right. Let's take our seed, our soil, and ourselves for our digital disciples, our digital givers. If you're online today, if you're in the house today and you're paying electronically your tithes and offerings, hit us at Word and Worship 7. If you are a cash app, everybody say cash app. Cash Appers, Word and Worship 7. Give the fires, give the fires. Good to see you, Tyree. Uh, the Word and Worship Church, the Word and Worship Church. If you need a tithing envelope, just lift that hand in the air. Amen, amen, amen. June, you should be watching this morning. June's out of town today, but God bless you. Yes, yes. Um, last week, we had a phenomenal Mother's Day service. Uh, the, the, the place was packed out. And we ran out of bag giveaways. If you did not receive one, um, we did reorder. So if you did not receive one, just stop at our GNC table and receive your free bag. If you did not, if you tell somebody, if you did not get one, amen. Not if yours broke, amen. <laughs> if you did not receive one, amen. Pray over the seed, the soil, and the sower. Aren't you thankful that God has given you a job? Amen. Amen. Aren't you thankful that you get something in the mail every two weeks? Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that you got food on your table, clothes on your back? Amen. We thank God for employment. We thank God for benefits. Can you give God a praise for benefits? Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Father, we thank God for the seed, the soil, and the sower. God, give us a press down, shaken together, running over, good measure, blessing. We are blessed. This is why we sow. We sow because we are blessed. Therefore, we are so blessed. Take what's in our hand, marry it with our head, combine it with our heart. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, greeters. If you're on Facebook this morning, you can continue to give. You can give now. Thank you for your continuous giving, your magnanimous giving. Everyone have a chance to give? Amen. A chance to give? Okay. Thank you for your wonderful giving. At this time, we will go into a sermonic selection and then follow by the word of God. Okay.
deserve it. Come on, with praise. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve all the glory.
give it, don't make them take it. Don't make them take it. You deserve it. Is there still a praise in the room? If I gave you 30 seconds, what would you do with it? Come on. What would you do with it? Give them a wave offering in the house. You better believe he deserves it. Nobody else is entitled to the praise. It's reserved. The praise that you give God should be reserved. You can't touch that. That's for God. Remember back in the day, Daddy would get the big piece of chicken? You can't touch that. You can look at it all you want. You, you can't touch it. Gabby, this worship, it's, 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 it's isolated only for the Lord. Because the last, last time I checked, you didn't, you didn't die for nobody. You didn't save nobody. Last time I checked, you didn't redeem anyone, did you? The name alone is worthy to be praised. I said his name alone. Hold the music, hold the music. When you know he deserves it, you don't struggle with giving it. If you can put clouds in the sky by speaking, you deserve it. Facebook, I wish you could uh, feel the glory in the house. There's a bomb in Gilead that will provide healing for our souls. This is called a Tehillah spirit when you're just singing his name, glory. It's a Tehillah praise. You deserve all my glory. You don't need to be a singer, just be a servant. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify your great name. God, thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for sticking with us. As we prepare for Pentecost Sunday, when they were on one accord, when they were on one accord, the Holy Spirit flooded, came in like a mighty rushing wind. And they started speaking in unknown tongues. And 
people outside thought everybody was on Jack Daniels and doing drugs, but it was an impartation of the Holy Spirit. We glorify your name, God. We glorify your name, God. Oh, we glorify your name, oh God. Glorify your name. Father, make preaching possible, make preaching plain, make preaching powerful. Only you can do it. We surrender to your will and to your way right now. Our ears are open, our eyes are ready, our mind is ready. Minds alert to receive the, the word of God. Don't just give God your full attention, but give him a surrender. Say, God, speak to me in this place today. We'll be careful to honor you. Give your name praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Kendall, can you put up my Pentecost slide right there? So often we neglect the Holy Spirit. The word Pentecost, it's 50 days from the resurrection. Pente, 50. 50 days from the resurrection. We know what happens every December. We celebrate the what? The, the birth. And we know what happens on, on that Friday in April. We celebrate the death. We know what happens that following Sunday. We celebrate the resurrection every year. And you make it your business. You say, I'm going to be on church on Christmas. I'm, I'm going to be there on Good Friday. I can't miss Easter. And then 50 days later, something happens. The Holy Spirit is installed and ordained to the body of Christ and the church don't know what's happening and it's my fault and my leaders and I'm throwing y'all under the bus because I played for y'all for 30 years and I never got a memo pastor Ken Holmes Minister Holmes, get ready for Pentecost Sunday. Did you hear what I just said? We don't even know what it is. We have never even heard of it. What in the world is Pentecost? And I got convicted. Not by the Holy Spirit, because that's not his job. But I got convicted personally, because I know who he is. I depend on him. I trust in the Holy Spirit. We sing songs, we sing, we sing uh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Watch it. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Watch this. Praise Father, Son, and... We never, Sister Val, get to the and, Holy Ghost. And you will hear pastors say, give the Lord a praise. You will hear me say, give Jesus a praise. How many times do you hear Ken say, let's give it up for the Holy Spirit? It's like he, he's, the forgetten, he's, he's the forgotten middle child, the, the black sheep of the family. 
we don't talk about the Holy Ghost. Um, now, me, me and Dr. Cannon, we grew up together at the same church. The only time that they prayed for sick folk is when they weren't there. <laughs> we had something called the sick and shut-in list. And if you was on the list and not in the building, we prayed for you. If you was in service, that meant you was well enough to get here. You don't need no prayer. The only time we laid hands is when grandmama whooped us. Are y'all catching this? The only time we took out the oil was when we had afternoon service. We had to fry some chicken downstairs. Did y'all go to that church? True story. I'm about 10, 11 years old. Thank you. Thank you. Um, about 10, 11 years old and... One Sunday morning, there's a sister in the corner speaking in an unknown language. Okay. Now, I grew up Baptist. I mean Baptist, Baptist. Right. I'm talking about having been led as we believe in the church covenant. Okay. Amen. I'm, I'm talking about Baptist. I'm talking about we need to buy some curtains. We need to make a motion. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking about hey, that Baptist. Amen. Some of y'all still that Baptist. Amen. And you got to vote on everything. And there's a, a young lady in the back corner in a folding chair, speaking in another language, shaking all over her body. And I asked my mom, I said, Mom, what's going on? And my mom said, the Holy Ghost got her. And I went home and I prayed, Holy Ghost, don't get me. <laughs> Can anybody relate to that? I was scared yeah. of the Holy Ghost. I didn't want no parts of the Holy Ghost. As long as I got King Jesus, amen. I don't need nobody else. And I was trying to avoid what God gave me to advance me. Have you ever tried to avoid it because you were annoyed with it? Say that again. What have you tried to avoid because you were a little annoyed? So Jesus says to his disciples, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me also. He says, in my Father's house, come on, Bible people, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have never told you. I'm going away to prepare this place for you. After I'm done preparing it, I'm coming back for you to take you to the place that I've prepared. So I'm getting ready to go work on your room. But when I go work on your room, I'm going to pray to the Father, and I'm going to ask the Father to send a paraclete, a helper. I don't know. Did I start preaching yet? I'm not sure. I'm going to send a helper, a, a paraclete. And he is going to be with you, but not only with you, he's going to be in you, and you're going to be able to do greater works than these. So while I am preparing the house for you, the Holy Spirit is preparing you for the house. And then somewhere he says, and by the way, don't quench spirit. How many people are gardeners, love flowers, working outside, cutting grass? Let me show you an example of quenching the spirit. Um, you're running the water, you're running the hose, right? But the, but the faucet is all the way across the yard, right? And you want the water to stop. What do you do? You bend that thing, don't you? That's called quenching the spirit. Meaning you say this, um, you can flow up until this point. And once you get to this point, I quench you. Mm -hmm. you. You can have this part of my life, but not that part of my life. I'm quenching you. God, you can't have all of me. I'm going to quench you. Um, next week, I'm going to deal with um, so I'm about 20, this is 1997, and I started hanging out at the Pentecostal churches. Come on. 
I, 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 was, I was being bad. And I started going to power, praise, and deliverance. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Now, you talking about power, praise, and deliverance in the 80s, in the 90s, she would preach for six hours. I started going to Delaware, victory, Pastor Gary Whetstone. Are y'all catching this? And I'm seeing things, Brother Gary, that I have never seen in my life. I am seeing miracles. Because at my church, they were fairy tales. Things you talked about, but you never saw. I am seeing deliverance. And what I was fearful of, I got a phone call from a pastor in Delaware and said, are you ready to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm sitting on my bed. Called me up. And I am totally against tongues because every church I've played for, majority, are against it. No women preachers, amen. No tongues, miracles, healing, all that has stopped. So now I'm on the phone. He asked me, do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I don't even believe in speaking in tongues. He said, open your Bible. And we went through scriptures. And we went through prayer. I couldn't even fake the gift. The only thing I could say is coming on a Honda, leaving on a Chevy. That was, that was it. That's all I had. Um, and Caleb, I, we started praying and reading. And before you know it, words started coming out of my mouth. And my ministry exploded. I was now going to the same church in Delaware. They were calling me on stage, and I'm laying hands on people. And people are getting delivered, and people are getting healed. But I couldn't tell anybody. So I called the major preachers in the area. Y'all know who they are. And I said, do you speak in tongues? One of them said, why? <laughs> it, was, it was a hush-hush thing. I called your mom. I said, I just spoke in tongues. She said, you're lying. <laughs> but the church doesn't talk about it. We don't know how to handle it. Next week, we're having a service. We're going to release people, pray for people, for those who want more of the Holy Spirit because you've been quenching him, you've been stopping him in this area of your life. Lift your hands right now all over the house. Come on, lift your hands all over the house. Come on, lift your hands all over the house. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to ask God, this your heart desire. David said, one thing have I sought after, that thing will I continue to seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, but now we are his house. I surrender Surrender all to be my come on blessed Savior. I surrender all. Holy Spirit, sweet perfume. Fill us now with your glory, your presence, and your power. Joel said, not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, says the Lord. The Holy Spirit says, I don't need to come in more. I just need more of you. I want you to surrender that thing and say, God, I'm giving you full range. I'm giving you full and complete surrenderance. Anything that's blocking me, stopping me, we ask for your Holy Spirit. 
Okay, put your hands down. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for being obedient as I was as well. Um, today we're going to be in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. It's five words. Five words. And you have to say, I got it. All right. Come on, let's read it like you had your Wheaties this morning. Let's read it together. And be filled. Stop. Ephesians 5, 18. Be filled with the Spirit. And use for a thought this morning, it's a Philly thing. <laughs> Just tell somebody, it's a Philly thing. It's, it's a Philly thing. It's not a feeling, it's a Philly thing. The reason that you're able to love the unlovable is because it's a Philly thing. The reason that you're able to forgive the unforgivable, it's because it's a, it's a, not a feeling, but a Philly thing. The, the, the reason that you are still able to go to that job, come on, and work with those folks is because it's a Philly thing. Are y'all in the house? The, the reason you are still friends with your ex, okay, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a Philly thing. The, the reason that, come on, your kids are not even speaking to you, but you're still paying bills, you're still protecting them and providing for them. They act like they have never been raised by you. They forgot that you took them to the doctor and to the dentist, that you wiped their diapers, that you, come on, clean their bedrooms. It's a Philly Thing. The reason you went from operation to operation, come on, you went from sicknesses to healing and you still got joy, it's a Philly thing. The reason, come on, I still have a good mind and come on, strength, it is a feel. it's not a feeling. It's a Philly thing. I met somebody, they say, you don't want to mess with me, I'm from Philly, I got, I got, I got Philly, I got Philly in me. I got Philly in me too. I got goodness in me. I got grace in me. I got joy in me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his. It's a Philly thing. He wants us to be filled with his precious Holy Spirit. Um, fill me, God. He says, be not drunk with wine. Don't shoot the messenger. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Get over the jacket. Come on, get through this so y'all can listen to this sermon. Amen. I only got one like. Amen. Um, amen. <laughs> um, he says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the what? The spirit. Why, does not he, why doesn't he want us to be drunk with wine? Because I'm kidding, when you're drunk with wine, you, you, you lose total control, and you get out of control. Uh, you stop acting like yourself. Yes. Amen. Come on. And you are under the complete influence of alcohol. Yes. So he says, do not become out of control with wine, but he says, I need you to surrender and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you surrender to the Holy Spirit, listen, you are not out of control. You get more control. He calls it self-control. There's a fruit of the Spirit that is called self-control. And when you surrender to the Holy Spirit, He doesn't take control. That's not His job. Right. Just, no, He says, I lead you and I guide you. He says, my job is not to control you. He says, my job is to produce fruit in you, which gives you self-control where you surrender and you say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Amen. Now listen, uh, there, there, there's two types of people. There, there's those who um, ride roller coasters like First Lady, and there, there's those who ride roller coasters like Pastor. Amen. 
Um, how many roller coaster riders do we have in the building here? Amen. No, okay. People, they say, I'm not a roller coaster fan. I, I just don't do roller coasters. All right. I don't do roller coasters. That's not, that's not my thing. Um, Michelle likes to get on roller coasters that twist and turn. And, and, that go upside down, backwards. Are y'all catching this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I try to take one for the team. I ain't no punk. Hey, Amen. I'm going to get on the ride. But uh, she goes in fully led by the Spirit. I'm fully led by fear. Are y'all catching this? When, when, when they drop that, uh, when they drop that, that that's the safety bar. All right. All right. Okay. Um, I'm like this. Right, 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 right. Michelle like this. Because she knows Shannon something that I don't know. She knows that regardless of every test, every trial, every turn, every bump, amen, no matter what, it does not change the destination. Thank you. Okay. It, it's not going to change the destination. She knows that um, while she's going through these dips and these turns and even backwards, that she will be changed while her destination is not being changed. And she knows this, that through every loop, even Gary, when we're going backwards, that she knows this, through every test, through every trial, through every turn, that she's getting closer to her destination. Are y'all catching this? So because she understands, amen, how the roller coaster of life works, she can count it all joy. And while pastor is like this, she's like waving her hands in the air, shouting, singing, talking to everybody on the ride, smiling because she understands that, watch this, for I know the plans, Jeremiah, for I know the plans that I have for you and they are to prosper you. Come on, that you be in good health. She understands something that I don't understand. I think that the destination is going to change. I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't see how this is working out for my good. So I am holding on to this bar for dear life saying, Lord, don't talk to me. Don't bother me. Everything gets on my nerves. But when you are led by the Spirit of God. I don't care hell or high water. I don't care what comes. I don't care who leaves. I will count it all joy when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, Kendall, next slide. Um, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Mm -hmm. Real quick, it says, blessed are you when? When you're what? Blessed are they who, who are what? Hungry. It didn't say you're blessed when you eat. It said all you've got to do is get hungry. You ever met somebody who always hungry? <laughs> Every time you see them, they hungry. Blessed are those that are hungry. This hungry is a deep starvation, a deep desire, a deep zeal. I ain't talking about you hungry, you ate breakfast, and now uh, you hungry for lunch. When the prodigal son Dan got hungry, where did he go? To the pig's pen. But when he got really hungry, he went to the father. I'm going to say that one more time. Y'all study. When he got hungry, he went to the pig's pen. But when he started starving, he said, I am going home to the Father. Sometimes, Tyree, God will give you what you want so you can realize it's not in the pig's pen. Has God ever allowed you to go in the pig's pen because you were hungry and then you got to the pig's pen only to, only to realize there was not any food in the pig's pen? God sometimes will allow your plan to fail so his plan can prevail. God will allow you to make a dumb decision 
depression. God will allow you to go down stupid street. God will allow you to go into no good neighborhood so you can see ain't nothing there but trouble. And when you get there, you get more hungry and you say, I've got to journey, get to my father's house because in my father's house, there's some fatted calf. And when he started walking, Crystal, God started running. How many people know when you start walking, God starts running? Somebody said, you draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. And God said, go get the fatted calf. He was hungry, starving, and blessed. Point two, point number one, Kendall, stay hungry for the word. Continual being hungry. Point two, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. So Sherelle, the word represents the food, the hunger. I'm hungry for his bread. But I'm also thirsty, thirsty for his wine, for his water, for worship. So my thirst, everybody say, here it is. Here it is. My thirst is me living what I've been learning. So the word gets in me from my hunger. I'm getting the word of God. I'm getting the bread of God. But now I become thirsty. I want to start living what I've been learning. How do you be? thirsty in the natural the more you eat you start to get thirsty you need a balance you need a balance they that worship him must worship him see so in spirit and in truth if you get all truth all you're doing is learning highlighting come on just learning and you're never thirsty you're never living what you're learning you're going to dry up if you get all spirit, come on, and no truth, you'll just be running around the church, flipping over pews, but not able to live anything because you don't have the word. So you've got to be hungry for the word, Kendall, point number two, but you've got to be thirsty to worship. Worship is not singing. Worship is obeying what I've been learning. That's true. They that hunger and thirst after, Kendall, next verse, after what? After righteousness. How we doing? Doing good. Thank you, Dad. Um, they're hungry and thirsty after righteousness. Nikita, there's three different types of righteousness. They're self-righteous, which the text cannot be talking about self-righteous. Because self-righteous people are not hungry because they say, I already have a nice righteousness. So I'm not hungry for, for righteousness because self-righteous people say, I've already got it all together. I'm not hungry. I'm not thirsty. I cross every I and dot every T. You hear what I just said? <laughs> yeah. Self-righteous people say, I got it all together. Self-righteous people say, I pay my tithes. Self-righteous people say, I come to church. Self-righteous people say, I go to the store. And when they say, would you like to donate a dollar to Salvation Army? I round it up and I donate a dollar. Self-righteous people say, I prayed for Ukraine this morning. Self-righteous people, they, they have everything in order. But our self-righteousness is as filthy as... That's not what the text is talking about. This is not self-righteous. Second type of righteousness, there is a legal righteousness. This is for those who have been justified. For those who have been justified. So God sent Jesus who knew no sin to become sin to die for those who have sinned. And those who have been reconciled back to Jesus Christ, to God, we are the righteousness of God. That is a legal righteousness. It's positional. It can't be that because we already have that. I'm not hungry and thirsty after my position. I'm righteous positionally. So there's a self-righteousness, there's a legal righteousness, but then there's also a living righteousness, or you can call it a moral righteousness. This is when I'm trying to get my condition to line up with my position. So because positionally I am righteous, I want to be conditionally 
righteous. So I have a hunger and thirst to be conditionally righteous because I'm already positionally righteous. The fact that I want to be sanctified is because I have already have been sanctified. The fact that I want to be changed is because I have already been changed. The fact that I'm growing is the fact that I am already seated on the right hand of the Father. Are y'all catching this? If you are not being changed, it's because you've never been changed. If you have no desire to be sanctified, it's because you have never been sanctified. If you have never had a desire to live righteous, it's because you have never accepted your legal justification to be righteous of God. The evidence that I am positionally righteous is that I want to be conditionally righteous. And God wants our position to line up to our condition, and I'm preaching way better than you saying amen. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So Kendall, point three was what? Okay, so we have to seek his will. So we have to be hungry for his word. We have to be thirsty for worship. But we also have to seek his will. For they shall be filled. Give me that, Kendall. For they shall be filled. Give me a scripture on that. Okay, for they shall be continually and consistently filled. Because the more filled I get, the more hungry I get. And the more hungry I get, the more thirsty I get. And the more thirsty I get, the more filled I get. And the more filled I get, the more hungry I get. And the more hungry I get, the more thirsty I get. Because in the natural, when I eat, I get full. But in the spiritual, when I eat, I get hungry. So we say things like every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before because the more Jesus I get, the more Jesus I want. So don't I stay hungry. You got to stay hungry. You stay on fire. You stay thirsty. How often? Content every day, every day. Not on Sundays, not on Tuesdays. Every single day, I want more of Christ. Come here, Moses. Moses saw a burning bush. How many people have ever seen in their yard a burning bush that would not go out? If you did see one this week, Levi, you know what you would say? You would say, Pastor, can I have a mi the microphone for a minute? <laughs> Amen. You would say, I have a testimony to share. If you saw a burning bush in your life that would not go out and you heard a voice that said, take off your shoes, how long do you think that would last you? That would last you a couple decades, wouldn't it? You tell everybody, no. I remember when I saw the burning bush? It did not go out. Anybody got a testimony? Come on, that you keep telling people. After he saw the burning bush, then the Lord said, now I want you to go to Pharaoh. And Moses saw two, two million Israelites escape bondage. You would have thought that would be enough where God says, you've seen enough. But then Moses hits a rock and water comes out. You would think that Moses has seen enough. But then Moses has saw, come on, lice and frogs and flies. His glory, you would think that would have been a, enough, but Moses is still hungry. And then Moses saw a cloud by day and a pillar by night. Now, if you saw all this, you would think you would be full. But Moses still wants more. He said, I, 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 I went to Ocean City and I, I put my, my rod in the ocean and, and the waters parted. Not only did the waters part, but all of us walked on dry land. You would think that would be enough. He went to Mount Sinai, and God said, get up here so I can talk to you about the Ten Commandments. You would think that would be enough. And Moses has the unmitigated gall to one day say, God, can you show me your... Are you kidding? Because every time I see it, I want more and more and more and more. And God fills us and he fills us and he fills us and he fills us. And you never get full of the goodness of Jesus Christ. Can you give God a praise for being filled with the gospel? 
Can I put all my points up real quick? Stay hungry for the word. Thirsty for worship. Not singing, obeying. Seek his will. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Let me do this illustration here. This is the world. And we all were in the world. Y'all catching this? The Holy Spirit's job is to convict the world of their sin. That's his first step. He does not convict believers. He comforts us. Your salvation started when the Holy Spirit convicted you. He convicts the world, but not everybody gets convicted. This is why you have been called and chosen. So the Holy Spirit's job is to convict the world of their sin. And after the Holy Spirit convicts the world of their sin, God pulls you out of the world. And no man can come to Jesus unless he is drawn by the Father. Convicted by the Holy Spirit and then drawn by God to Jesus Christ. If any man be in Christ. He is what? A new creature. Any man, any boy, regardless of your age, regardless of denomination, regardless of your sin, if any man is in Christ, not church, not a ministry, not over a ministry, not in the baptism, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Old things. What happens to them? All your sins, all your shame, all your guilt, past sins, present sins, potential sins, post sins, thoughts, deeds, imaginations. If you are in Christ, I don't care what sin you are in, if you are in Christ, all things have done what? Passed away. He said, I will discard them from as far as the east is from the west. I will remember them no more and throw them into the sea. I just messed up somebody's blue Honda there. Okay. Um, that's, so, amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> and I remember them. No more. Because now you are a new creature. I want you to know, you can't get in that door from the outside. The sin that God has thrown away can't come back in your life. Because you are alive and that stuff is dead. If you get back involved in it, you got to go get it. It can't get you because that door is closed. That addiction's over. That fornicating spirit is over. It's dead. It's under the blood. It's washed. It's covered. I've been redeemed. I am a new creature. That's deliverance. You don't need to be delivered. You need a whooping. That door's closed. Has no more dominion over you. You're in charge now. Amen. So when you want to smoke and when you want to do whatever you want to do, that's your decision that you make. And anytime you want to stop, you stop because that's dead. You're alive. Before you got saved, you were dead and your sin was alive. So we're baptized in Jesus Christ, and then after we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we are indwelt with the Spirit of God. We are indwelt. So this is is man, we are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. You don't have a say-so in the matter of being indwelt. 
The indwelling of the Holy Spirit happens immediately and instantly at salvation. This is not being filled. This is being indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Every bona fide, blood-bought believer in the building has the Holy Spirit inside of them. You don't need more of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs more of you. Every believer is indwelt with the Holy Spirit. We're baptized into the body of Christ. We're indwelt with the Spirit. And then after we are indwelt with the Spirit, we will be sealed with the Spirit. And then he seals us with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all getting hungry and thirsty, aren't y'all? Yeah, he seals us. Y'all catching it? So when I have been indwelt, I have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. It's an earnest. It's a down payment. It's letting you know that Christ is coming back for you. It's a deposit. Are y'all catching this? So I've been in, baptized in the Holy Ghost. I have been indwelt with His Spirit and sealed with His Spirit, and then He puts me back into the world. I'm not filled. I just have the Holy Spirit in me. I'm sealed. He doesn't ask for your permission to seal you. You're sealed instantly and automatically, indwelt. But he tells us to be filled. Filled is in the passive, meaning you're re responsible for being filled. You've got to ask it. You've got to be hungry for it. You've got to thirst for it. We're going to deal with this later on next week on Pentecost Sunday. He came to fill every believer. He just does not want to indwell you. You want him to be guest. And God says, I want to be host. You want him to be resident. God says, I want to be president. Are y'all catching? God says, I just don't want to come on, live inside you. I want to rule and reign. I don't want to just reside. I want to preside. <laughs> the Holy Spirit that he puts in you is for you. When he fills you, it's for other people. And if you're just indwelt with the Holy Spirit and you go back, it's a filly thing. It's not a feeling thing. It's a filly thing. You won't even affect the people around you. They don't even know that Jesus Christ is your Savior. You laugh at the same jokes, you go to the same parties, you drink the same drinks, you do the same, run with the same people because you're saved, you're indwelt, you're sealed, but never been filled. And Jesus is saying, be filled with the Spirit. Because when you are filled with the Spirit, there are signs and evidences. Your ministry will go to another level. Can you imagine if everybody in this house was working under the anointing of God? Just not those on this side of the state. If everybody was walking in their appropriate gifts, if everyone was walking and ministering in their appropriate power. So somehow, Michelle, this, this individual, he decides, I'm tired of just being indwelled and never being filled. And he desires a hunger and a thirst. And you start asking, Lord, fill me. And he says, oh, you want to be filled. You want to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So he gives you the desire and a hunger for the word of God. And so there's some things you've got to stir up. He stirs up desires to pray, stirs up desires to fast. He stirs up desires. Sometimes you've got to send trials, tests, and temptations in your life. But before you know it, God will take you from being indwelt. He will take you from just being sealed to take you to being filled, transformed. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you go back to work, amen. When you go back to your pulpit, wherever your pulpit place is, wherever it is, whether you're a doctor, lawyer, police officer, teacher, and you go back to your place, there'll be something totally different about you. Yeah. And before you know, because you, this is when you're filled, you begin to overflow. I didn't want to make a, make a mess up here, but how do you know when something is filled? When it begins to overflow because the Holy Spirit in you is for you, but the Holy Spirit on you is for others. So God says, I want to fill you so you can be a blessing to other people. And before you know it, this brother here starts getting convicted. Not by you, but by the Holy Spirit, by seeing your lifestyle. And before you know it, God draws him. And if any man be in Christ, 
He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And before you start affecting people at your job, you start affecting people in your community because change people, change people. Amen. It's going to take a church. Come on that's been delivered. It's going to take a church that has been set free. It's going to take a church who understands the power of the Holy Ghost. It is a Philly thing. It's not a feeling. And they that hunger and thirst shall, not maybe, shall be I would love to see every believer filled with his Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. Where you say, God, I'm, I surrender all. Yes. Be not conformed to this old world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So in 2001, I'm, I'm now a tongue talker. I'm now anointing people. I, I get a job in, in, in Maryland, traditional church. I read their doctrine, but the Lord was telling me to go there. So we're out to dinner, and I'm, I'm hired, but I didn't start yet. And the pastor says, do you speak in tongues? And this is pretty much so interview time. And the flesh said, plead the fifth. Right? And I know the church is totally against it. And we're out at a restaurant. He's sitting right across from me. He says, do you speak in tongues? And I'm thinking, if I say yes, I won't get the job. If I say no, <laughs> I might not keep the power. Amen. <laughs> what did I say? This is funny. This is how God works. I said, yes, I do. Tree, he started cracking up laughing and said, you are hilarious. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? He didn't believe me. <laughs> and I said, yes. I stood, come on, I stood my ground, amen. I stood my ground. He started cracking up. He said, you funny. <laughs> but my flesh was saying, quench the spirit. Don't let them flow in your life. Cut it off. God wants to take you from just being indwelt to being filled so you can change the world. The Holy Spirit, who is the Trinity, the Godhead, the third person in the Godhead, he is the source of all truth, yeah. the author of all scripture. He leads us, he guides us, he comforts us, he's our guidance counselor, he gives us boldness to witness, grace to stand, hope to endure, strength to fight. He, his job assignment is to promote the agenda of God to the world, to every country, to every state, to every city, to every community, to every church, and to every Christian. It's a Philly thing. When people don't get you, when people don't understand you, let them know, say, it's a Philly thing, it's not a feeling thing. God has come into my life and redirected everything and now, ever since that 1997, he has redirected my ministry, strengthened my ministry. I saw exponential growth because I took the challenge and I said yes to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Is there anyone in the room that says, I want more of God and less of me? Come on, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really serious about this thing. I want more of God and less than me. Let's stand on our feet today. We're getting ready for Pentecost Sunday on next week. Getting ready for Pentecost Sunday on next week. I'm going to ask that you wear white and something. You can wear all white. You can wear white and, and a white top, some, a dull color bottom. But I'm going to ask that we'll be in white on next week if you can. Don't stay home because you don't have white. This was not a salvation message, but there could be a room. Christ's salvation was there. Maybe the Holy Spirit convicted you during the sermon. As an unbeliever, see, I have yet to make Jesus Christ Lord of my life. I know church. I know liturgy. 
I know doctrine, but I've never accepted Jesus Christ. God says, I can draw you to Jesus the Son. If any man be in Christ, said, are you in the room today? Lift up that hand. Don't miss the airplane from the airport. Today's your day. Today's your day. Anyone to my right? We offer Christ to you. Don't go to hell with a church fan in your hand. Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice if they need a church, if they need a Savior, if they need Christ, if they need a change. When I'm done praying, Father, give them the strength, the faith, the courage to be bold in the Spirit, to want more of you and less of us. In Jesus' name, amen. The doors of the church are open. You say, mate, today I'm going to join the church. I've been coming here, been visiting here, but today the Spirit has spoke to me, and today I'm going to make the Word and Worship Church my present, my present place of worship, my permanent branch of Zion. Are you in the room today? Hallelujah. Are you in the house today? I need Christ. I need church. I need a change. I need a change in my life. It's a Philly thing. It's a Philly thing. We got to be filled with his spirit. This is a commandment. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melodies in your heart, giving thanks always for everything, submitting one to another. These are evidences of being filled and overflowing. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for worship. We thank you for this church, Father. Lord, we pray, Father, that you would bring back to our remembrance that Monday through Saturday we will be praying at 2 p.m. Just a short, strong prayer. And when they were on one accord, you showed up. For those that cannot pray at 2 p.m., you can join us at 2 a.m. Bring someone with you on next Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday, 50 days after the resurrection when the Holy Spirit was given to you. What Jesus accomplished, the Holy Spirit applied, and now we're living out. Now to him who's able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It's a Philly thing. It's a Philly thing. Yeah, 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 yeah.